Number 54, a glass coffee pot has a circular bottom with a 9 centimeter diameter in contact with a heating element that keeps the coffee warm with a continuous heat transfer rate of 50 watts. Letter A, what is the temperature of the bottom of the pot if it is 3 millimeters thick and the inside temperature is 60 degrees Celsius? So first thing is you have to the first ask yourself, well, what type of heat, how is the heat being conducted? Right, we're talking about two side two sides of the pot. So the, it's a glass pot, and let's say that you know I'm here's my little picture, but I'm going to magnify then the little black piece there at the bottom, the bottom of the pot. You have your fire, right? You have the fire on down here or whatever. It's being heated by some element. It doesn't necessarily have to be a fire; it could be some electrical um, apparatus. Um, you have the bottom of the pot being one temperature. We'll call it T one, and then the the or we'll call it T2, it really doesn't matter. And then we'll call this one the inside of the pot T1. Okay, so you know that heat will be traveling through this material via conduction. That's how the heat travels through a material, through conduction, through the actual contact of the molecules. Um, so that being the case, I know I'm using this particular formula. Now they tell me the rate of heat transfer, which is basically Q over T, right? Watts, watts is joules per second. So this is joule per second. So that's the same thing. So I'm basically going to be using that formula. I'm just going to plug in power there is equal to the thermal conductivity constant for glass multiplied by the area over which the conduction is occurring multiplied by the change in temperature essentially or T2 minus T1 divided then by uh, the thickness, which is D, the thickness of the material we're talking about. So they told, So basically what I want to do is I want to solve this for, uh, you know, T2, right? According to what I, what I uh, wrote over there. Now, I'm, I know, you know it's going to be hotter down here than it is inside the pot, right? Because it's closer to the heating element. Uh, so that being the case, I'm going to plug in a positive power. And I know if T2 is greater than T1, this term should also be positive. So I'm really not concerned about the direction of the sign, you know, the signs necessarily. I just want to make sure the answer makes sense. So that's why I'm just making, uh, making that uh, known. So why don't we just start plugging in the numbers? So this is basically 50, right? Is the constant for glass that's looked up. It's 0.84. So 0 0.84. The area, they told us the circular diameter. Oh, great, right? We know we need, we need the area with the radius. So it's pi times the radius squared. Well, what's the radius if the diameter is 9? Well, it's 4.5, right? But that's 4.5 centimeters. Gosh darn it, I got to convert that into meters. So you got to divide that by 100, okay? That whole thing is squared. Then multiplied by this change in temperature. This So this is T2. That's what we're trying to find. And T1 says the inside is going to be 60 degrees Celsius. So that's I'll plug in my 60 there. And then now divide this by the thickness, and they told us the thickness here was going to be a three millimeters, but you know we need that in uh, meters, so divide that by 1,000. And let's just start, you know, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to calculate this, okay, first. So let's do, uh, let's do uh, 0.84 times then pi times point, uh, 4.5 divided by then 100, square that result. Okay, and then divide that now by 3 divided by 100. Excuse me, 1,000 there. So that whole thing works out to be about, so now it works out to be 50. It will equal 1.78 or so T2 minus 60, right? Divide out the 1.78 from both sides. So 50 divided by that 1.78 is about is about 28.07-ish. And that's equal to T2 minus 60. Add the 60 on over to the right-hand side, and what do you get? So the T2, the other temperature, the temperature by the heating element should be about 88.1 88 .1 degrees Celsius. And that's it. All right? So that takes care of that. And then that was letter, you know, part A here. And then how about part B? So if the temperature... Uh, sorry, if the temperature of the coffee pot remains constant and all of the heat transfer is removed by evaporation, okay, how many grams per minute evaporate? Take the heat of vaporization to be this. All right, so basically they're saying here's the power supplied, right? Remember that this power is going to be the units of power, you know, the SI will be a joule per second. Now, they want us to find evaporation per minute. So first, why don't we just find then the amount of heat that is being given, right, to essentially the pot per minute, 
All right, so we just have to then multiply the seconds on the top, minute on the bottom, 60 seconds in one minute, and this should hopefully make sense. So 60 times 50, right, is going to be what? It's going to be 3,000, and that's going to be joules per minute. Okay, so this is the amount of heat being transferred per minute. Now, they want us to find out how much is actually evaporating, right? How many grams and whatnot. So as soon as you start hearing evaporation also, you're thinking of this formula up here on the upper right. And this formula is basically, I'm going to do the work up on the upper left. So this tells us that the heat energy uh, that's needed to, let's say, evaporate something, right? This, this is the phase change formula, is equal to the mass that is evaporating multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization, okay? Now, if I plug in the energy here, val the energy value per minute, what do you think I'm going to find then for the mass? Well, that would then be the kilograms, right? per minute, okay? Right, that should hopefully make sense. Whatever energy value I plug in correlates with then the mass value that it gets spit out. So essentially, if this value is per minute, then the mass will also be a value that is evaporating per minute. Okay, so that being the case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in my 3,000, okay? My 3,000 joules. Remember, that's a value every minute. I'm gonna be solving for the mass, and I want to plug in now my latent heat of vaporization, but remember we need this in terms of what would be, so we're consistent with the units, that has to be in terms of joules. So just take that value and add three zeros to it, right? 2340, 000. So we get 2,340,000. Now divide that value, the 2 million value, uh, over to the other side. So it's th uh, th uh, 3,000 divided them by 2340,000. And here we have now about... 0.00128 kilograms. And remember, if this was the heat transferred per minute, then this is the mass that is evaporating per minute, okay? Per minute. And then they wanted us to find not the kilograms, but the grams, so you just gotta move this decimal one, two, three places on over to the right, and AKA it's gonna be 1.28 grams per minute. All right, that would be the final answer. Guys. Hopefully this helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.